Hello, it's Jeff Sauer here, and I just wanted to clear up some questions that I had about changes that are happening in Google AdWords and Google Analytics. I've had a lot of questions, actually. I've been talking to people at Google and talking to anybody in the community who will listen, and I think I might have some answers now, and I wanted to share what I've learned and also share how it impacts you in what you do. So the first thing is that Google AdWords rolled out a lot of changes recently, and so did Google Analytics, really. And that all starts with the new version of Google AdWords. So the new Google AdWords interface was released to everybody on October 11th, 2017. And we've talked about the new interface on our website and our blog and shared how we like it, how it's fast and how there's some convenience and it's easier to find things. Some things are a little bit harder to find, but generally it's been a pretty positive development. And then not that long after it, I tried to find out how to do conversion tracking and had some pretty serious issues. And so that led to a whole tweet storm, a whole bunch of things happening. And I'll show you those in a little bit. But basically what happened was, I believe that the new AdWords interface was rolled out specifically to get ahead of this new change that came with the Safari browser that came with the new updates that Apple pushed out with their new iOS 11 and whatever other technology they put out there. And so if you look at this screen, we're looking at a Google blog post here, and they basically say that because of something that happened, intelligent tracking prevention in Safari means that we can't actually track things with third-party cookies anymore like we used to. And a lot of the conversion tracking that you use in AdWords or in Google Analytics, those things may be broken. And so this is showing us how to deal with these things that may be broken, how they might be broken, and what we can do to solve the problem. And so if you look at this intelligent tracking prevention, we'll put a link to this in our video notes. You can take a look and see what this is all about, but this is basically what the WebKit organization is saying that they're doing to handle cookies. So this rolled out, and then not too long afterwards, Google rolled out all their changes, hastily, mind you, without a lot of documentation because they wanted to get ahead of the game. They wanted us to be able to track their solutions, and they didn't want to answer questions about why wasn't this supported? Why don't you track in Safari? Why don't you like us anymore, Google? And basically what they say is that there's three ways you can get around this problem. One is you can use something called gtag.js. Now this is a new code of varnish on top of the existing analytics.js file that you'd be using for universal Google Analytics. And it's just a simplified way of tracking your website. And within that gtag, you also have the ability to declare both Google Analytics, Google AdWords, and what they say soon, double click. And so basically you can put one tag on your site and then you can define which networks you want to send data to and you can have AdWords and Analytics alongside each other with just one simple definition and then adding your account IDs in there. Now, I've written about this and how I'm not ready to switch to gtag.js, but that's just what it is and, and you're going to be seeing this more and more, so you might as well get used to it. This is the new reality we live in and it's mostly because of this change in Safari. If you want to, If you want to install this, then you don't have the same third-party cookie tracking issue that you would have with the standard way of doing it, both in Google Analytics and Google AdWords. And you'd also have to put a second conversion tag on AdWords. Now we show you how to do this in last week's video, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already so you can see how it happens. You can also link AdWords to Google Analytics. Now we've all done this. Hopefully if you're running AdWords and Google Analytics, you have to link these two products together. You get, your, you get your GCLID coming over, you get all kinds of data coming through. That's pretty much mandatory if you want to do any AdWords advertising. So either you install gtag.js or you link AdWords and Analytics accounts. And then the third thing is if you want to link the cookies together, there's this thing called the conversion linker tag, which I had never heard of before, but apparently it's a thing and it's more than just a thing. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that in just a moment here. And so there's three ways that you can make sure that your AdWords conversions are working properly, that you're tracking things properly across the different systems. And the first one involves retagging your entire website. So I don't find that to be too practical. Second one, you've probably already done already. And so this should be not a problem at all. And then the third one is to do this in Google Tag Manager. And I want to talk about the third option because this is the one that you may not have done. And it's a new addition, something new that I noticed in Google Tag Manager. Now, as anything goes, when I'm in Google Tag Manager and I choose a tag template, I noticed this for the first time just the other day. And I thought that I was going crazy. I was like, how long have I not known about this thing for? How long have I been living under a rock? And it turns out this did just go live not too long ago. So it did go live in October, right around the time of that announcement on the AdWords blog. 
they basically announce these things all at once to get around that new Safari tracking mechanism or, or opt out of tracking mechanism. So basically, if you choose a conversion linker in Google Tag Manager, they don't require you to do anything. They say nothing matters and you can learn more about it. And then you can put your trigger in place however you want to get that done. And basically, you have this conversion linker. So what exactly is the conversion linker? It's basically putting all your ad click info into a first party cookie instead of being in a third party cookie. Now, again, this is something that happens automatically when you're linking AdWords to analytics because Google Analytics uses first party cookies. But if you're having any troubles or seeing any weird experiences, this is going to be the bridge between them. And so basically, this is another tool that you're going to want to put in your toolbox if you are having trouble tracking conversions between the systems or if you don't have your AdWords and Analytics accounts linked together, then this is going to be what you need to do in order to make this work. And I also wanted to point you in the direction of a Twitter post that I put out there because I was really frustrated with this not too long ago. Obviously, I'm recording this not too long after this tweet went live, and then it's going to be published a little bit later. So things have constantly evolved since this point. But basically, I complained about gtag.js. The person who invented gtag.js, who's Brian Kuhn at, at Google, he asked some questions, and I, I just went through my frustration. And you know, at first, I was wondering if it would break my data layer. He says that that's not what's going to happen. And then I asked some more about, well, why, where is my AdWords ID and conversion label? And he did this nice little drawing. It says, here's where they are now. Like I said, they hastily rolled this thing out. So this wasn't necessarily well known to us at the point in time. And so last week's video covered this piece about what's going on here. And this conversation I thought was pretty solid because it just really helps us understand what's going on. As you can see, this went on forever. There's all kinds of cool stuff going on there. But basically, if you're curious about what this means, about how to get your conversion tracking in place, about gtag.js, this is just another development, another thing we've learned in our journey. And so we're going to keep on publishing these videos as often as we can, hopefully once a week, just to let you know what we discover, point you in the direction of resources that you can use, and just keep you up to date with what's going on. Because I've searched high and low on the internet trying to find answers. I can't find them. And sometimes I find that when you can't find the answers yourself, you have to create the answers once you find them. And so that's what we're doing here. And I hopefully you enjoy this. And I look forward to talking to you next week with our next newsletter and our next video. Thank you.